Good day. Today I'm uh, putting together a little video about building a rowing dinghy. Now this is a fiberglass dinghy that I built a few years ago and it is uh, consequently not actually video, it's uh, a slideshow of pictures I took during the construction. So, also, I took the pictures, so any pictures of anything actually happening won't include me. So, let's get going and take a look at building a 10-foot rowing dinghy. I'd like to start this video by saying a little bit about the dinghy. Now, this is the finished dinghy in my yard the day I finally brought it home. The dinghy is a Great Harbor 10 uh, finished as a yacht tender, where yacht tender is just a finish level. And these uh, dinghies are nominally built by uh, Hank Hinckley, who is the son of uh, Henry R. Hinckley II, who uh, started the Hinckley Company, the well-known uh, boat builder. And Hank has continued on with his own companies. And uh, I built this boat in collaboration with Hank. He helped me with the fiberglass work, and uh, I did all the finishing. So, let's take another look at the boat. This is a view showing you what it looks like inside. You can see the seats, all the trim on the boat, seats, uh, gunnels, inside of the transom uh, is done in mahogany and is varnished. So let's get going with the actual construction of the boat. As is true for the construction of any fiberglass boat, the first step was to prep the mold which that consisted of washing the mold out and then uh, waxing it. And I think I applied about eight coats of wax to this mold. I also masked around the outside of the mold so that we wouldn't get any uh, fiberglass bonding to the outer edges of the mold, as you can see here. And then once all that was done, uh, one evening, right after everybody else had left the shop, Hank and I sprayed the mold with gel coat. My part uh, in the gel coat application was to mix the gel coat up and get it ready to load into the spray gun while Hank did the actual spraying. See we started, did one side, then went down the other side back to the transom, and uh, the entire gel coat spraying process probably took about 15 minutes with around half that time reserved for cleaning up the spray gear. And here, finally, is the entire uh, hull sprayed with gel coat. We left this overnight before we started laying up fiberglass. The next day, we did all the glass work. After the uh, gel coat had reached its initial cure stage, we dry fit the first layer of glass. And this is one and a half ounce chop strand mat that we just fit in and we laid it down each side of the boat and overlapped along the center line of the hull. And uh, then once we dry fit it, we wet it out with resin and rolled out all the bubbles and had uh, the first layer of glass into the hull. Here's the hull with the first layer of chop strand mat in. We use chop strand mat as the first layer to give a nice smooth surface against the gel coat to prevent print through from the woven fabrics. Uh, you can see where the uh, glass is doubled up along the center line of the hull and back near the transom in the uh, keel indentation we put in an extra layer of uh, chop strand mat just to give it a little bit more strength. We gave the initial chop strand mat layer about an hour for the resin to kick. Then we laid out a layer of 1708 biaxial uh, fabric and uh, glassed that in again with polyester resin. And here Hank is just rolling out a last few bubbles along the center line of the hull. And once again the 1708 overlaps down the center line of the hull. So uh, after this was done, 
we moved on to the final step, which is final layers of chop strand mat to give a little bit smoother finish than 1708 does inside the hull. And here's the dinghy after we've finished the fiberglass work. You can see we put and a layer of uh, chop strand mat over the entire interior of the hull. And then we also laid in a final layer from the waterline down just to stiffen up the hull below the waterline a little bit. And uh, at this point, we uh, are ready to move on to the next stage, which was putting in the bases for the seats. The seat bases are sort of U-shaped fiberglass uh, troughs that are glassed into the uh, inside of the hull. And here they are in place. They have been glassed on the inside. And uh, after I completed this, I ground off a little bit of the uh, gel coat on the outside of the seat bases and glassed them on the outside as well. And you can see there in the mid-seat, that there's something in the middle of it that is a centerboard trunk because when I built this boat I wanted the option of making it into a sailboat dinghy so I laminated a fiberglass sail a centerboard trunk that penetrates into the center uh, seat base and you can also see at this point that I have popped the dinghy out of the mold and it's just sitting on a uh, stand so that I can work on the interior if you look closely, you can also see the mass step, which is glassed into the uh, forward seat base. Once the seat bases were glassed in, the next step was to uh, fill them with expanding two-part polyurethane foam, which you can see here. After we poured it in and let it set up, we trimmed it off. I trimmed it off flush with the top of the seat bases. You can also see that I've started cutting out the uh, mahogany seat tops. Uh, these are about 15 inches wide and uh, they are made from edge glued mahogany planks uh, with uh, splines along the edges. Once I finished glassing the seat bases in, I gel coated the interior of the hull and then uh, built the mahogany inner, inner transom, again from three planks that are edge glued and splined together, and uh, epoxied the transom into the hull uh, with uh, a number of large clamps and a bunch of small clamps along the top edge to hold it in place until the epoxy kicked. And at this stage, we're ready to move on to building the gunnel. And here is the uh, boat with the mahogany transom in place. Once I finished that, I moved on to building the gunnel trim. And here you can see the lamination of the bow part of the trim in progress. Basically what I did was cut down uh, mahogany into thin enough strips that I could wrap it around the entire bow without the mahogany splitting and then uh, built up a multi-layer laminate around the bow of the boat. As you can see, this uh, lamination, which was done with epoxy, took a couple of clamps. I also uh, draped a polyethylene sheet over the hull to keep the laminate from sticking to the hull because I knew I would have to trim it after it was finished. Once the bow lamination was finished, I cut it to the appropriate size and epoxied it to the hull. And then I started working on the gunnel. Here's the port side of the gunnel going in. And that consists of two strips of mahogany, one on the inside of the hull and one on the outside of the hull that are both epoxied to the hull. However, I didn't trust the epoxy to uh, hold the uh, gunnel strips to the fiberglass. So once the epoxy kicked, I removed all the clamps and drilled through about every six inches and put a T-nut into the mahogany from the inside so that the T-nuts were flush with the inside of the mahogany and then screwed through from the outside to uh, basically screw through the mahogany and the top of the fiberglass so that that mahogany will never come off. Once I had the uh, port side gunnel finished, I moved on to the starboard side and did the same thing. Again, a strip of mahogany inside the hull and a strip outside the hull, both epoxy to the hull and then uh, 
screwed through using stainless steel screws and T-nuts. Because I didn't want the T-nuts to show inside the hull, I laminated a final layer of mahogany over the top of the T-nuts on the inside of the hull, and then moved on to the final step in fabrication of the woodwork for the hull, which was to finish out the uh, bow fitting by laminating uh, additional mahogany around the curve of the inside of the bow and you can see it clamped in place here. Once all the woodwork was done, which took about a week, I uh, cleaned everything up and sanded all the wood out in preparation for varnish. And then for the next 10 days or so, Every day I put on a coat of varnish at the end of the day when the uh, shop crew had left so they wouldn't have to uh, smell it. And then the next day came back, sanded the varnish out until I built up about 10 coats of varnish. And here I am getting close to the end. I think I probably only had about five or six coats on here. Once the varnish work was finished, uh, before I put the seats on, I uh, painted the inside of the hull from the waterline down with a non-skid finish just to make it a little less slippery. After I finished the interior painting, I installed the oar locks and a bow eye and put a canvas-covered uh, foam bumper all the way around the gunnel and then uh, put on the cove stripe, painted the boot stripe, and put a couple of coats of bottom paint on the hull. And then the dinghy was ready to go home and go into the water. Altogether, the dinghy build took about three weeks, uh, with most of the time spent building the uh, woodwork and uh, painting and varnishing. So it was a, a nice project, and I'm fairly happy with the result. It rose beautifully, and I also have a... Uh, fabricated the stainless steel pad so that I can put my Torquedo electric outboard onto the dinghy uh, without marring up the mahogany. So there it is, my Great Harbor 10 Yacht Tender dinghy built with the uh, help of Hank Hinckley for the fiberglass work and everything else uh, I did. So that's uh, another boat that I have built. Hope you enjoyed the video and seeing the stages of building this thingy. And if you did, please subscribe and click that notification bell. And don't forget to give me a like. Thanks for watching.